Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we will discuss about pseudobulbs on orchids. It is another vital organ for the orchid and just like we did with leaves and roots, we will discuss about the functions of the pseudobulbs, what they actually are and what they're good for. And by the way, if you missed the videos about roots and leaves, I'll link them down below in the description as this is part 3 of this series of getting to know orchids better. Alrighty. Pseudobulbs. As the name suggests, pseudobulbs are bulb-like formations, usually on sympodial orchids, those types of orchids which create a rhizome and new pseudobulbs periodically. This doesn't mean that all sympodial orchids have pseudobulbs, there are many that do not, like Paphiopetalums and other species, but with the orchids that we can purchase and we can easily own, we will not find monopodial orchids with pseudobulbs. Now, why are they called pseudobulbs and not bulbs? Well, in botany, when referring to bulbs on a plant, we refer to a structure that is underground. And while a pseudobulb shares a lot of functions with a true bulb, it is not considered a true bulb simply because it forms on top of the soil and it looks a little different. Now, both terrestrial orchids and epiphytic orchids have pseudobulbs, and in both cases, the pseudobulbs are not situated in the soil. When talking about epiphytic orchids, all the structures of the orchid are on top of the soil because epiphytic orchids do not grow in soil. But with terrestrial orchids, pseudobulbs are structures that form above the soil. Now, since many of us grow our orchids potted in orchid medium, not soil, the structures will always be on top of the medium. If a pseudobulb is buried in the medium, it will not have a good life, it will most probably rot, unlike a true bulb. Actually, a pseudobulb is an enlarged section of the stem. Most orchids have a stem, and if you think of Phalaenopsis orchids, the stem is the center part of the orchid. It is responsible for producing leaves, roots, and flower spikes. In the case of pseudobulb orchids, things are very similar. So this is the first function of a pseudobulb. Being that it's a stem, it is responsible for the creation of the other vital parts of an orchid, meaning the leaves, the roots, the flower spikes, and the rhizomes. Now, sympodial orchids create a small rhizome that connects all of the pseudobulbs. And even though it might appear to us that the orchid is creating a brand new plant, it's not really the case. Each pseudobulb that forms is part of the very same orchid. In time, the leaves and roots of an orchid might get damaged, they might die off on their own, they don't really live forever. So the pseudobulb ensures that the orchid has new structures periodically that function normally and sustain the existence of the orchid. Each new pseudobulb starts out life as a little nubbin at the base of a mature pseudobulb. In time, it will develop tiny leaves and tiny sheaths, and as it grows, it will mature into a structure very similar to the previous one. So besides being responsible with the creation of roots and leaves, each pseudobulb is also responsible with creation of new pseudobulbs. So the first and foremost function of a pseudobulb is to sustain and create new leaves for the orchid so she can properly photosynthesize, also the creation of roots so she can properly get hydrated and absorb nutrients, as well as creation of flowers which serve as propagation devices, and last but not least, the creation of new pseudobulbs, which will perform the exact same functions as the previous pseudobulb. Now, the second main function of a pseudobulb is storing nutrients and moisture, and especially on epiphytic orchids, this is a very important function that the pseudobulb performs. As you can see, a pseudobulb of an orchid is a pretty thick formation. It is stiff to the touch, and compared to the other structures of the orchid, it is the thickest, most impressive structure, if you want to call it like that. In their natural habitat, epiphytic orchids do not benefit from a lot of moisture at all times. This will depend on the species, but for the most part, an epiphytic orchid will not have the same quantity of water and moisture available at all times as a terrestrial orchid. So a pseudobulb stores the moisture and the nutrients that become available to the orchid whenever it rains, so the orchid can utilize them when the weather is not rainy. This function of a pseudobulb makes the overall orchid be more tolerant to drought. Now, this doesn't mean that orchids can sustain extensive periods of drought, we still need to offer water. But for the main part, they are far more adapted to drought than other types of plants, and you can do a simple test. 
find a plant that is not an orchid and does not have pseudobulbs or other storage devices, unpot it and put it on the table. Then get an orchid that has a storage device, unpot it and put it on the same table. Wait 24 hours and then check the difference between the two plants. You will most probably notice that the other plant looks dehydrated and shriveled and almost dead, while the orchid will look almost brand new, if not identical to how it looked like prior to you making the experiment. So the moisture storage capability of a pseudobulb is really impressive if you compare it to other plants. But as I was saying, it doesn't really mean that orchids cannot be watered for a month and they will be perfectly fine. So inside a pseudobulb we will find water as well as nutrients and these are directed through the different structures of the orchid that actually benefit from those nutrients. And this is quite the unique adaptation in the orchid world when it comes to epiphytic plants and not only, some terrestrial orchids do live in harsh conditions as well and they do benefit from pseudobulbs as well, even if their roots are inside the soil. And the third important function of the pseudobulbs is propagation. And in the case of sympodial orchids, not only the flowers are responsible with propagation, also the pseudobulbs. If we were to cut one or two or three or more pseudobulbs connected or standalone from an orchid, there is a very high chance the orchid will live on, since the first function of a pseudobulb is to create the other vital structures of the entire orchid. If we separate one of the pseudobulbs, it will try to create a brand new pseudobulb with a brand new root system and of course brand new leaves. This is a very common technique with orchid growers who want to multiply their orchids. Mind you, this is only valid for sympodial orchids that create multiple pseudobulbs connected through a rhizome. The technique of actually separating one of the bulbs and planting it on its own in the hopes that it will create a brand new orchid is called propagation through back bulbs. It, however, has the least chances of success because one single pseudobulb cannot store enough energy for the actual orchid to create a brand new pseudobulb of the same size and as functional as the previous orchid. It is not impossible though, but it does depend on a lot of factors such as the health of the orchid, your environment even, and the species or variety you are trying to propagate. Most common though is division. This means cutting the rhizome at a point that ensures three or more pseudobulbs are always present on the division. So if I were to propagate this orchid, I would need to cut the rhizome somewhere here because this will give me a division of three pseudobulbs and a division of two pseudobulbs which is not ideal, but it's better than one. Now, since the pseudobulbs are connected through a rhizome, they communicate in the sense that they share moisture and nutrients in between them. So if any of the pseudobulb were to create a brand new structure, the other two pseudobulb would direct their energy towards that pseudobulb that creates the new structure to help it create the best structure it can. As I was saying in the case of a back bulb, there are no other pseudobulbs that can direct their energy towards that growth. So if you will, the pressure is only on one single bulb and and that's why this technique is not as successful as a three pseudobulb division. Also, a back bulb will most probably create a smaller structure and overall the orchid will take longer until it reaches full size and until it is able to bloom. And for all these reasons, it is more common to propagate sympodial orchids through divisions of three or more pseudobulbs rather than back bulbs. Now, these are the three main functions of the pseudobulbs or the most important functions. There are other functions such as photosynthesis. Since they're green, pseudobulbs do contain chlorophyll and they are capable of photosynthesis, but they're not the organ responsible for this and it's not their main function. The leaf is actually responsible for photosynthesis. But as we know, orchids do have a lot of backup plants so if something happens to the leaves, photosynthesis can be performed by the pseudobulb and even by the roots and thus ensuring that the new structures have more chances to develop normally and have more energy to produce new roots, new leaves and so on. Now I was telling you earlier that the difference between a pseudobulb and a bulb is its placement. True bulbs are placed in the soil. This also means that true bulbs have some other additional structures that protect them from excessive moisture, molds and so on. A true bulb like in the case of a tulip, for example, has a layer of sheets that surround it and those actually protect it. A pseudobulb doesn't have a layer of sheets. On some orchids, when a pseudobulb forms, you can find a layer of sheets, but they actually dry and the layer of sheets is not thick, like in the case of a true bulb. For this reason, a pseudobulb should never be buried because it is in danger of rotting. 
Excessive moisture around the pseudobulb, particularly at its base, can lead to its demise. So for this reason, orchids that have pseudobulbs should be potted on top of the medium. Now there are a few species of orchids that produce corms or tubers, but those are something different, they're not pseudobulbs. They are actual corms and they can be inside the medium or the soil. Usually they are found on terrestrial orchids, but with epiphytic orchids there is no need for a corm because no part of the orchid is actually buried in soil, so we will only find pseudobulbs. Now pseudobulbs can come in different sizes, different shapes, it's a wide variety that depends only on the species of orchid. Most pseudobulbs have a sort of an oval shape to them, but there are also pseudobulbs that are more rounded, like in the case of oncidiums usually, but even with oncidiums we can find pseudobulbs that are more elongated, for example, they do resemble more a pear than anything else. In the case of dendrobiums, the pseudobulb is actually elongated and pretty thin in comparison to other species, we usually call it a cane because of its shape, but it's still a pseudobulb, while orchids such as cadley can be somewhere in between. The pseudobulb can be elongated and rather thin, but it can also have a sort of a bulbous section to it. There is just such a wide variety when it comes to sympodial orchids. Being that they store moisture, pseudobulbs should always be firm to the touch and should have a smooth surface. When an orchid cannot hydrate herself or when you forget to water in time, you will notice fine wrinkles on the surface of the pseudobulb. And if left on water, a pseudobulb can desiccate so much that it will start to look more like a raisin than anything else, so it's best not to reach that point. But the funny thing is, once the orchid gets rehydrated, the pseudobulb will plumb back up as well if it doesn't have irreparable damage. Now of course it will not be as smooth as it used to be, but definitely it can plump back up once the orchid can hydrate herself once again. So from this point of view pseudobulbs are elastic. Now this doesn't mean that all pseudobulbs should be very rounded and very plump. Some pseudobulbs naturally have ridges, such as in the case of the bulbophyllum. These ridges are natural and it doesn't mean the orchid is dehydrated. Also, many types of calias have natural ridges, but the difference between these ridges and a dehydrated pseudobulb is that they are not fine. A dehydrated pseudobulb usually looks like it has wrinkles. As for the natural ridges, they do appear to have some sort of symmetry from the top to the bottom. So to recap, the main functions of the pseudobulbs are the creation of new structures for the orchid such as leaves, roots, flower spikes and even new pseudobulbs. Also, they serve as storage devices for water and nutrients, and also they can propagate the orchid through division. And for all of these reasons, a pseudobulb is a vital organ of the orchid. The more pseudobulbs an orchid has, the better it will perform and the healthier it will be, because it has a lot of moisture stored and also nutrients. And even so, orchids do regenerate pseudobulbs as well. Some sources suggest that a pseudobulb has a limited lifespan of about 1 to 5 years, and indeed in my collection I did observe that the oldest pseudobulbs at some point do not plump back up, sometimes they yellow and are shed naturally. So if you lose a very old pseudobulb on your orchid, I don't think there's a reason to worry. If you lose multiple pseudobulbs and some are not that old, then it's a reason to worry and you should definitely check it out, see if the orchid is healthy, but that's a different topic. So I hope you enjoyed the topic of today, and if you've enjoyed this video, please rate it down below with a like if you did like it, and a dislike if you didn't like it. Also subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time, bye! So I peeled a little bit the dried sheets on my Ida Locusta, and I found something quite interesting. Well, this orchid does produce roots, but I don't know what these are. I'm not sure if they are flower spikes or new roots, because this orchid actually blooms on immature pseudobulbs. I'm trying not to keep my hopes high, but this is kind of exciting. Now, funny thing, if you didn't know in my language, locusta, or a very similar word, means grasshopper. And grasshoppers can be green? I don't know. But when I think about it, I just think grasshoppers.